Greetings, my fellow free blood sovereign thinkers. This is LL3's Lewis Podcast. My name is Craig Transmitting from the beautiful Swampy Mango, South Florida. And today's date is Thursday, May 24th, 2018. Yes, it is uh, early Thursday morning. Now I say, why not? For I just got a few things on my mind, it's in the blood. Can't complain about it. Yeah, so it was interesting what's happening in the world of sports, especially when they talked about the new policy on the national anthem, on the national anthem, kneeling down, could be you could be fine. So if you don't want to go and stand and budge to rise for the national anthem, you can stay in your locker room. What's so cute about that is, but it's okay for NFL Commissioner Goodell have Homeland Security work with the NFL and pat down all the patrons that come to the games like little prisoners. You are convicted for attending this game. Ain't that sweet. It's okay, we, we can respect the flag, but can t- be contemptuous on our Bill of Rights culture. Something to really look at. And like I said before in the past, for Kaepernick, he should have talked to me about something what to do in the name of protest to really rattle some cages. And to be very frank, what he did was too soft. Yes, tyranny is always going to be around, but there's a lot you think social injustice, social justice on a particular group, particular group of people with reference to their skin color only matters? No, it's a lot bigger than what it is. And I say that in good faith. And, of course, uh, one of the players got stun-gunned. Now they're making a big thing about it in the sports. Of course, he's an athlete for the Milwaukee Bucks. If it was you and I, no one would care. And how come? How about that person who got tased Got tased for asking a legitimate question when, uh, what's his name, Jim Carrey spoke at University of Florida. That's okay, right? If it was, if it was someone like you and I, no one would care. Now it's important because an athlete or under celebrity status has been targeted. And I'm not saying it's a good thing that happened to him, but it's, now it's going to be a wake up call. People will be talking about it. Well, one thing for sure, according to some friends of mine that live in that city, Milwaukee is one of the most segregated areas in the United States, racially segregated, which is a real shame. So you're going to show you the black thing and the no so forth. But like I said, everyone's getting tased. It doesn't matter what you look like. But always going to look at things in the bigger picture. As I've been telling people for a long time, the war on terror is a war with the people or ourselves. Well, speaking of the war on terror in the police state, I'm going to be reading a topic comparing to, comparing to that, which I can both relate. Came out yesterday, and this one's called "Update Police State and Surveillance State Rebooted by Courts." And it says here about border surveillance electronics, customs and border protection has slowly ramping up their illegal searches over the past few years. As we discussed in January, over 30,000 people had an electronic device to search without probable cause or warrant by Customs and Border Protection in 2017. That was a 50% increase from 2016. I believe anyone on American soil deserves every protection under the Bill of Rights, but even if you think foreigners do not qualify for those protections, that still leaves 6,000 Americans who had their rights against unreasonable search and seizure violated by American customs agents in 2017. Okay, so even people that are considered foreigners have to have the same protection because it's under our Bill of Rights culture. There's no exception. I'll continue on here. Sometimes it just seems like government is testing the public's response. They essentially want to see what they can get away with and what the public fights back. What way the public fights back. Of course, the game is rigged in the government's favor. 
your only recourse for a rights violation by the government is to go to the government court, especially with those beautiful golden ridges around the American flag, which is, and, is, and your name's in capital letters, which is considered a corporation, right? Absolutely. But apparently some judges still have some integrity and a sense of duty. And this month, an appeal... The Fourth Circuit Court, the Fourth Circuit ruled that border agents need, at very least, reasonable suspicion in order to search anyone's electronics, not just Americans. Unfortunately, the court did not apply did not apply the stricter stance of finding probable cause that a crime has been committed or even acquiring a warrant before having the authority to search electronics. This is the problem with the government having a monopoly on courts and po and policing. Violation of rights happen in real time, and there is nothing you can do. There is no guarantee the courts will ever vindicate you, but if they do, it will. Be, it will. It will years later in a narrow in scope. Roadside immigration checkpoints. Last September, we talked about a roadside checkpoint in New Hampshire that was meant to catch illegal immigrants 90 miles from the Canadian border. They snagged a few unlucky families back from Boston, although the latest reports say that no one was actually charged with illegal immigration. But the local police collaborating with federal officials did arrest a number of people for a small amount of drugs. New Hampshire State Police and federal agents had drug-stiffing dogs at the illegal immigration checkpoint. Now, drug evidence has been thrown out in 16 cases stemming from the checkpoint. Civil liberties groups argue that the state's constitution protects citizens from searches, including those by those those by drug sniffing dogs, unless there's a reasonable suspicion of a crime. The group mentioned the court to suppress any evidence obtained during the canine searches. It happened to me one time at a trial station in Hollywood many years ago on my phone, and some dog just sniffed on me, and the cop said, "Thank you." If I kicked them in the balls. I'll get thrown in jail for having me violate my rights. If I touch an officer, I can go to jail. So, so thing is called exceptionalism. Abraham Lincoln will be extremely proud. To all your Lincoln worshipers out there, you start doing your homework. As the court ruled, these checkpoints flagrantly violate New Hampshire Constitution and the Fourth Amendment, Custom and Border Protection, and the Woodstock Police Department search and seize hundreds, if not thousands, of individuals during the summer tourist season without any reason to believe that these individuals had, had committed a crime. This is not how a free society works. In addition to ruling prosecutors in these 16 cases, can't submit evidence obtained by drug sniffing dogs in state courts. Judge Rappa also ruled that he believed the checkpoints were unconstitutional because the primary purpose was not enforcement of immigration violations, but that it was the detection and seizure of drugs. Citing your Supreme Court case, Rappa points to a legal precedent that the primary purpose of a motor vehicle checkpoint cannot be the random detection of criminal activity such as drug detection. Very interesting indeed, right? Yeah, live free or die, and you got these Woodstock Police Departments Betting over for customs and border protection, homeland insecurity. The common thread. Immigration terrorism are used to excuse as an excuse to violate your rights. In these particular cases, the court system hit back, but the victories are narrow. The next ruling could go the opposite way, or the or these could be overturned. And of course, the policing agencies might just ignore the ruling and keep violating the rights at checkpoints and searching electronics at the border. After all, it will take months, if not years, for the victims to have any recourse. No individual will be punished for violating citizens' rights. Their agencies certainly won't be defunded. The, pro the main problem is that Americans have sold their freedom to roots for security. The runaway police is a much bigger threat to any random American than any illegal immigrant or terrorist. The government may use them as an excuse, but you are the real target of their surveillance and their intimidation. And the fact that drugs were the worst crime uncovered by the checkpoint and the target of many electronic searches makes it even worse. 
The drug war is used to carry out over 50,000 SWAT raids a year, which gets many innocent people, officers, and low-level drug violators killed. Stop the advance of the police state. We cannot rely on the courts. We need to reject any anti-immigration fear-mongering, reject terrorism fear-mongering, and reject drug war propaganda. Terrorists, immigrants, and drugs are far smaller than a threat than smaller threat than a police state we invite in to stop them. You don't have to play by the rules of corrupt politicians, manipulative media, and brainwashed peers. Absolutely. The only solution to this is to fight a police state by defending our U.S. Bill of Rights culture. Late Aaron, late Aaron Zellman made that point. On the 13th of September on the JPFO archives. Never forfeit, it for, forfeit your freedom for security because it is, actually is called tyranny. Bending over for the state gets you nowhere. If you're gonna be a collaborator, you be you you be their gar you be their future garbage. So toss you to the side. There's another whore bag. Something to always look at, my friends. You got the the ability to enhance yourself and liberate humanity. You can't tell me. It can't never tell me it can't be done, because right there you're telling you're addressing to everyone, your Uncle Tom and Angel Mama to the state. I'm gonna have this guilt trip of being slave. Doesn't matter what you look like. Here's all these stupid propaganda about white guilt, black guilt. It's all pathetic. This is the bigger picture. That's why I said has to take some athlete to be stun gunned. Talk about civil rights. His rights are natural born as well. Gotta be a little bit ESPN now, right? But this is the bigger picture. What's happening? So, what are you gonna do about it? Do one thing that will protect your community, that will enhance the community on freedom. Exercise your natural born rights. Don't live in fear. Anything can be done successfully. Movements don't happen overnight. If you're going to be dumb, stagnant, and happy, just let everyone know. Have a sign go, I am a bend over Bob to the system. Or wear a cowbell around your neck saying, I represent walking anti-matter. So, that's how I look at it. And hopefully many of you will agree. Multiple avenues on countering this. Be the doctor, be the rabbi, the teacher. Talk to people. You know, at a restaurant, bar, nightclub. Even on the streets, rallies, finesse, use finesse. I won't just scream and yell on top of your lungs. That's how you call, that's what I call spreading the love. All right, speaking of tyranny, this one came out from Who, What, and Why, May 23rd, by James Henry, Secure under Civil Liberties Deep State Politics. CIA knew torture was extorting bad intelligence. Kept doing it anyway. The tyrannical way, the tyrannical way. Waterboarding gives me a hard on. The tyrannical way. All right, speaking of that, let's see what he had to say here. Mr. Henry had to say here. In February, we wrote about Kahi Shaikh Mohammed, the alleged mastermind of the 9 11 attacks, yet to stand trial. 17 years after the devastating attacks on the World Trade Center, Twin Towers and the, Pen and the Pentagon. 
The reason for the delay, Muhammad's attorney, David Nevin, asserts, is the government's desire to hide the details of the torture and rendition program his client and many others were subjected to in the early years of the war on terror. After years of uncertainty on what to do with the alleged 9-11 conspirators, the Obama administration ultimately decided in 2011 to try Muhammad and four others in a military tribunal at a U.S. naval station, Guantanamo Bay. But the process has been fraught with apparent prosecutorial shenanigans that only have have only added to the delay. As we wrote in February, hidden microphones were found in the rooms where the defense attorneys met with their clients. PP and Tom's. Hundreds of thousands of defense defense's emails end up in the possession of the prosecution and huge volumes of defense files mysteriously disappear from the Department of Defense computer network. The DOD did a network upgrade. Months of work were lost, according to Navy Commander Stephen C. Rees, an attorney defending Abel Al-Ram Al-Nurshi. Nurshi, another Talmud detainee, is accused of the involvement in the bombing, 2000 bombing of the USS Cole. Members of the Muhammad defense team, including Nevin, alleged they were the target of FBI spying. Another member of the Muhammad defense team, Major Jason Wright, resigned from the Army in protest after he had been taken off the case by a reassignment that he said would have violated his duty to vigorously defend his client. The government seized four of the defendant's laptops as they were used to prepare for trial, and that contained much sensitive client attorney material. The defense team accused the judge of secretly colluding with the, pro with the prosecution to destroy evidence that would have been helpful to their client. Oh, not getting a fair trial here. Huh? And, on, and the many pretrial arguments over the government's refusal to provide the defense with details of the detainee's treatment have also caused delays. Mohammed's defense team was even threatened with prosecution when they tried to investigate some aspects of the torture on their own. You see what's going on here? It's like beat them, beat them when they're down. What's truth got to do with it? CIA records. CIA's record of torture is front and center in the media again. This time because President Donald Trump's new CIA director. Gina Hospital played a key role in the AC program of enhanced interrogation, i.e. torture. Hospital was head of the station, at least one of the CIA black sites in Thailand, where torture took place and also held multiple senior roles at the CIA Counterterrorism Center, which oversaw the torture program. She was involved in the destruction of the video recordings of the torture sessions, was less than forthcoming with members of Congress who ask about her role in that action. Nevertheless, the, the Senate confirmed the fact that Haspel, who, Kate, who played a key role in the CIA torture program, made it through the confirmation process fairly easy. Signals at the very least that the agency should have no problem continuing to shield itself from any outside scrutiny of its treatment of terror suspects in the years after 9-11. Hurrah, hurrah. So kneeling down is more is more offensive than when the Senate approves people that has waterboarding fetishes. Hurrah, hurrah, exceptional. Obviously, President Trump, who said he would bring back all hell a lot worse than waterboarding, said Monday that America is reserving its strength by putting Haspel in charge of the agency. Wow. Thank you, President Trump. But besides the obvious motivation for covering up the particulars of the government's torture program, there is far more ominous reality being a sort of evidence obtained through that torture. Why? Because Muhammad, like others who were tortured, simply told his interrogators what he thought they wanted to hear, i.e. to get the torture to stop. Above, the above quote comes not from a human rights organization, or even from one accused defense attorney, but from the CIA itself, namely a 2003 internal agency cable describing the interrogation of Muhammad. The cable was included in, a, in 300 pages of documents recently obtained by BuzzFeed News. 
and you can read this yourselves. Documents were originally released to the nonprofit property of the people, which seeks to obtain and publicize government documents through the Freedom of Information Act. The materials include, ca include cables, PowerPoint presentations, talking points, and legal analysts, analysts, anal yeah, analysts and detailed narratives. Much of the revived discussion about torture in the media has dealt with this efficacy, whether or not reliable intel can be gained through its use, but there is another possibility which is largely ignored, that accuracy was always beside the point. The truth shall make you dead. Napoleon spoke against torture in 1798 because it was recognized that people will say anything to make the torture stop. And they considered, they considered Napoleon Antichrist at that time. Oh, yeah, interesting. Mohammed, Mohammed's attorney David Nevin told Who, What, Why in an email. A similar statement in CIA cable supports the accusation that the point of the torture program was, in fact, to get detainees to say what the interrogators wanted to hear. And ultimately, what members of the Bush Cheney administration wanted to hear was that Saddam Hussein had connections to Al Qaeda operatives. Dick Cheney is currently making the rounds, trying to convince America to go back to the enhanced interrogation techniques and presumably so the same kind of intelligence can be obtained. <laughs> I was wondering if this old puss bag Darth Vader ever did, ever, ever did water, been waterboarded. After a portion of the Senate Intelligence Committee report on torture was released in 2014 by the Senator Dianne Feinstein against fierce opposition from the CIA, it became known that Abin Shaklik al Libe captured in Afghanistan in 2001, testified to just such a link between Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda. He offered up, up this information while he was being tortured in Egypt after having been secretly there by the CIA. CIA agents questioned the validity of this statement from the start. However, the documents obtained by BuzzFeed show that Muhammad interrogators were well aware of the shaky nature of the intelligence they were obtaining through torture. Yet, the uncertainty of the in the CIA interrogation reports had evaporated by the time the intelligence made the way to the secret the Secretary of State Colin Powell. Powell that included the Saddam, uh, Saddam al-Qaeda connection is in his now infamous vial of anthrax speech that speech has been cited by many in the media and Congress ha as having convinced them to support the invasion of Iraq. In Powell's defense, he was only relaying bad intelligence that had been manipulated by Dick Cheney's White House Iraq group, according to this then Chief of Staff Lawrence Wilkerson. Even more damning, Wilkerson told Democracy Now! he's convinced that one of the primary motivating forces behind the torture program was to produce evidence to support the case for war against Iraq, even if that information was false. Presumably, there's a lot of evidence gathered through these interrogations about the conspiracy to attack the United States on 9-11, none of which has been subject to any kind of adverse or legal scrutiny. The legacy of a narrative obtained through torture and then strung together by the Bush administration has been 17 years of continuous warfare in the Middle East and erosion of civil liberties in the U.S. and the loss of hundreds of thousands of innocent lives. A few individuals blamed for the 9-11 attacks have yet to be brought to justice in a court of law while disturbing questions about what role our ally, the Saudi government, may have, might have played in the attacks have been ignored. It is only through luck that the bogus nature of Saddam, Saddam al-Qaeda connection came to light. One wonders what other spurious evidence from the CIA's torture program is steering America's post-9-11 anti-war, anti-terror policy. Oh, yeah. Like I said, the war on terror is a war. With ourselves. Interesting indeed, right? Nothing new at all. Bring back, bringing tyranny to innocent people. always said too for a very long time that 
9-11 was orchestrated by criminal elements within the governments of the United States, Great Britain, Saudi Arabia, and Israel. Just to give you some few examples. Also known as the New World Order. Been saying that for 16 and a half years. Blew over that to be exact. I'm not going to stop. This is not more than more deception of what lies ahead. The status quo. You'll bring back our constitution. In the constitutional crisis. All that garbage and malarkey has been happening for a very long time. What I can say, condemn these sons of bitches for what they're doing to us as innocent people around the world. All right, next one here. Ooh, sorry about that. Wow, a little bit uh, tired there. I'll be right back. Then we'll hit the next topic. Stay tuned. All right, so the next one we'll be hitting here came from Mises Institute. Mises Wire. I like it's the title, Austrian Economics, Freedom, and Peace. Some people get offended. Oh, well, they're more like not depending on the government. We got to rely on that. Shoot. Get real. All right, it says here, drug companies want to use the state to shut down the, competi the competition. It's by Hunter Lewis. Not surprising at all, right? Blue jeans have more in common with drugs than you might think. One of the more consequential, consequential episodes in history of corner capitalism occurred in the 17th, 18th century France. Cheap clothing made from cotton was threatening the rich woolen, linen, and silk manufacturers. They persuaded the government to ban it. In shorter, short order, government agents been, began spying into homes and coaches, reporting on anyone who dared to wear the new fabric. Thousands of violators of the ban were rounded up and either sent to prison or to ships as galley slaves, which was a death sentence. In Britain, the same manufacturers demanded a similar ban from the king, but were turned down. As a direct result, Britain launched its industrial revolution by making cheap cotton clothing for the world and began to get rich. While France stagnated economically, if France had not banned cotton, it had not fallen so far behind Britain's economically. Napoleon might have had the money to build a huge fleet and successfully invade Britain. European and world history might have turned out quite differently. Ain't that great? <laughs> it is easy to recognize and mock the absurd, absurd, absurdities of corny capitalism in the past, but not always easy to spot it today. For example, we have to replay the cotton story in contemporary American medicine. It's increasingly recognized that food supplements and lifestyle changes are the most potent medicines, but this represents a threat to drug companies, oncologists, and surgeons, and they have enlisted the power of government to protect their interests. Government, please help us. We can't wipe them on rear ends. Sweet pie purebred syndrome, I call it. It is illegal to claim that any substance, even a food not approved by the Food and Drug Administration, can cure, control, or even prevent an illness. But approval costs many billions of dollars, with few exceptions only new to nature molecules, that is, patentable drugs, can be approved. A producer of food or, or supplements who violate this law will be threatened with massive fines and long jail terms. Yes, all hail the victimless crime laws. Shit, shit, hooray, shit, shit, hooray, right? Shit, shit, hooray, right? Exactly. In recent years, both Walnut and Cherry Girls have been threatened by the FDA because they dare to show university research that the product has specific health benefits other producers have been convicted and put away for decades. Meanwhile, the drug, the, the drug and surgery interests charge more 
and more for products that may do as ha much harm as good as you can read in the manufacturer's own fine print and the cost of this government protected monopoly created under the guise of the protecting the public puts a lid on both job creation and employee raise employee raises while swelling horrific government death flicks. Nor it nor is the nor is it only the federal government. State governments are also allied with the entrenched medical interests. For example, it's against the long California for doctors to treat cancer using any other drugs, radiation, or surgery. The federal government protects drug companies making vaccines from any legal liability for harm to children. But California also mandates that any child attending public or private school must have had the full schedule of vaccinations. There is even a bill pending there would that would gag free speech about vaccines. No wonder drug companies regard, regard vaccines as one of their most promising profit-making opportunities, it's like cotton clothing manufactured in centuries past. What might be called natural medicine could be an enormous new American growth industry. Consumer interest is so strong, the industry has grown a bit slowly, despite being a being legally throttled. There is, however, little or no prospect that other countries will take the lead because the governments are even better controlled by bureaucrats allied with medical special interests. Meanwhile, it is still very difficult to educate the public because of the legal barriers. Even President Trump's White House physician does not know what a score of 20 on a vitamin D test is extremely unhealthy. He reported that the president had passed all the tests with flying colors a physician trained in natural medicine could set him straight, but he, but he would then no doubt be targeted by his state medical board. Well, like I said, government knows best, it turns to crap. Nothing new at all. It has been happening for all these years. Even in the book, How Capitalism Save America, talked about when John Rockefeller Brewed so much oil for Standard Oil, other oil companies were complaining to the government about this. It's a form of mercantilism, or you could say neo mercantilism, crony capitalism. And you know what? Detroit was Detroit, one of the reasons why they went under bankrupt because of that form of uh, economics and globalism as well. You can put both those in there. It was going on with the marijuana industry. They still want us try to, uh, some states still try to, like Florida, try to put an anchor on it, including Jeff Sessions, try to put an anchor on it. Give me a break. And we you even look at holistic doctors who are being slaughtered, who are being, who are being murdered for the past three, four years. Many of them are in South Florida. I talked about that on one of my shows many years ago. So, yeah, look at my archives on Spreaker. Unbelievable, I would say, but you know what? Way to solve it is open, free market of capitalism. Let the little guys be prosperous in what they achieve, create and achieve. Okay, this one here came out May 21st, a few days ago. I went to Lou Rockwell. I, uh, I went to Lou Rockwell. Was brought up, and um, says here. Not remembering the USS Liberty. And remember, Memorial Day is around the corner, so you always got to pay homage to these men and these people who served under that ship. And it says here, it's by Ray McGovern. Desperately seek some praise. President Trump surely won't remind Israeli President Netanyahu about the USS Liberty, which Israel nearly sank a half century ago killing 34 sailors, and ex-CIA analyst Ray McGovern recalls. It's safe to assume that President Donald Trump landed in Israel Monday. He will, not, he will not have been briefed on the irrefutable evidence that nearly 50 years ago, on June 8, 1967, Israel deliberately attacked the USS Liberty in international waters, killing 34 sailors, U.S. sailors, and wounded more than 170 other crew. All of uh, Trump's predecessors, Lyndon Johnson, Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George Bush, and Barack Obama have refused to address the ugly reality and or cover up the attack on the liberty. 
it is not too late for someone to fill Trump on the shameful episode, on the chant he might wish to sure more cor show more courage than the former president and warn the Israelis that this kind of thing will not be tolerated while he's president. A new book book by Philip Nelson titled Remember the Liberty Almost Sunk by Trees and on the High Seas is a must be for anyone wish wishing to understand what actually happened to the liberty and to contemplate the implications. As I wrote in the books forward even today, scandalously few Americans have heard the deliberate Israeli attack on the USS Liberty because the Cairo U.S. political, military, and media establishments have managed to hide what happened. No one. What happened? No one important wanted to challenge Israel's lame oops mistake, cause caught mistake excuse. Intercepted Israeli communications show beyond its doubt it was no mistake. Chief Petty Officer J.Q. Tony Hart who monitored the conversations between then Defense Secretary Robert McNara and 6th Fleet Carrier Division Commander Rear Admiral Lawrence Geis reported that Mac McNamara's instructive reply to Geis who had protested the order to recall the U.S. warplanes on the way to engage those attacking the Liberty McNamara. Liberty McNamara President Johnson is not going to war or to embarrass an American ally over a few sailors. The late um, Admiral Thomas Moore, after interviewing the com commanders of the U.S. Aircraft Carriers America and Saratoga, confirmed that McNamara ordered the air aircraft back to their carriers. Moore called it the most disgraceful act I've witnessed in my entire military career. Thanks to his, this book, those who care about such things can learn what happened 50 years ago. One, on June 8, 1967, Israel attempts attempt to sink the U.S. Navy intelligence collection ship, the USS Liberty, and leave no survivors. The attack came by aircraft and torpedo boat in a full daylight international waters during the six-day Israeli-Arab War. Two, the U.S. cover-up taught the Israelis that they could literally get away with murder. They killed 34 U.S. sailors and wounded more than 170 others, and three, as part of an unconscionable government government cover-up, the Navy threatened to court-martial and imprison any survivor who is so much as told his wife what, what had actually happened. This incidentally put steroids to the PTSD suffered by many of the survivors. One stab at truth. The only investigation worth the name was led by Admiral Moore, who had been chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He led a Blue Ribbon Independent Commission to examine what happened to the Liberty. Among the findings announced by the Commission on October 2003, unmarked Israeli aircraft dropped napalm canisters on the U.S. Liberty Bridge and fired 30mm cannon and rockets into the ship. Survivors estimated 30 or more sorties were flown over the ship by a minimum of 12 attacking Israeli planes. The torpedo boat attack involved not only the firing of torpedoes, but machine gunning liberties, firefighters, and stretcher barriers. The Israeli torpedo boats later returned to the machine gun, machine gun at close range. Three of the Liberty's life rafts had been lowered into the water by survivors rescued to the most seriously wounded. Shortly before he died in February, in February 2004, Admiral Moore appealed for the truth to be brought out and pointed directly at what he saw as a main obstacle. I've never seen a president stand up to Israel. If the people understood what the grip these people have in our government, they would rise up in arms, as quoted by Richard Curtis in a changing image, an American perception of the, Ameri of the Arab-Israeli dispute. Echoing. Sorry about that. Echoing more, former U.S. Ambassador Edward Peck, who served many years in the Middle East, condemned Washington's attitude towards Israel as obsequious, uncutest, subseverance at the cost of lives and morale at our own members and their families. In the Six-Day War, most Americans believed the Israelis were forced to defend against military threat from Egypt. Not so, admitted former Israeli Prime Minister 
Master Bain Bagan 35 years ago. In June 1967, we had a choice. The, uh, the Egyptian army concentrations in the Sinai approach do not prove that Egyptian President Nazir, Nazir was really about to attack us. We must be honest with ourselves, not we decided to attack them. The New York Times quoting on um, August 1982 Begin's speech, Amr Moore kept asking why our government continues to subordinate Americans' interests to those of Israel. It is the question. The war in Syria. Fast forward to the catastrophe that is now Syria. U.S. policy support for illusionary moderate rebels there, inducing false flag chemical attacks blamed by Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, can only be fully understood against the mirror of U.S. inquiries to Israeli objectives. New York Times Journal, J Jerusalem Bureau Chief in 2003, Jody Rodin, received an unusual candid response when she asked a senior Israeli official about Israel's preferred outcome in Syria. In New York Times article on September 6, 2013, titled Israel's Back, Back's Limited Strikes Against Syria, Rodin reported the Israeli view that the best outcome for Syria's civil war was not was no outcome. For Jerusalem, the status quo, horrific. It may be that for, from a humanitarian perspective, seems preferably to either a victory by Mr. Assad's government and his Iranian backers or a strengthen of rebel groups increasingly dominated by Sunni jihads. This is the payoff situation of which you need both teams to lose, but at least you don't want one to win. We'll settle for a tie, said Alan Pankis, a former Israeli council general in New York. Let them both bleed, hemorrhage to death, that's strategic thinking there. As long as this lingers, there is no threat from Syria. Okay. And it says here, Obama may have may have read or been briefed on Rondon's, uh, Rondon's article. In the event, last year, he told journalist Jeffrey Goldberg how proud he is at having resisted strong pressure from virtually all his advisors to fire crews and missiles at Syria in, uh, in September 2013. Instead, Obama chose to take advantage of Russian President Vladimir Putin's offer to get Syrians to surrender using surrender their chemical weapons for destruction, verified by the UN, abroad a US ship configured for such decision destruction. President Trump, in contrast, chose to go with his mad dog advisors. It is not yet clear whether he was successfully mousetrapped or whether he saw the April 4th chemical incident in Syria as an opportunity to retaliate and get a bump in popularity. There are why there are wider ramifications of ranks dishonestly, dishonesty and cover up, at which establishment Washington excels. Have we not seen this movie before? Think Iraq once again. The intelligence is being fixed. Back to the liberty. Admiral Moore is right in saying that if Americans were told the truth about what happened on June 8, 1967, they might they might be more discriminating. In seeing through Israelis' rhetoric and objectives, more insistent that we owe no less to the brave men of the USS Liberty, but also every man and woman who asked to wear the uniform of the United States, and he is right about that too. This book makes a huge contribution towards those worthy ends. There's all of the topics on here too. Navy vet honored foiled at the Israel attack, still waiting for the USS Liberty's truth. USS Liberty's heroes passing. I agree. It's fun because I knew about this, the basics of it. Um, I, re I read uh, I read something about it in the uh, Photos of the Fortune magazine. I was like uh, 14 years old. Then I took the time to check it out. You know, just revive my memory and did a little homework on it. And it's really damn disturbing. Got some documentaries on it. Even InfoWars talked about it too, believe it or not. Uh, Terror Storm. Like Alex Jones or not, has a lot of merit when, when it comes to the USS Liberty, false flag terror attacks. So that's one thing you got to really focus on. 
And yeah, folks, so when you rep, when you do pay homage to the fallen ones, add the US members of USS Liberty on that list as well. Because they've been betrayed. And the one and the ones that cert, that uh were responsible I call it tree crumb trees and scumbags. No ends if they're butts. That's why I'm not compassionate when it comes to the Israeli government or any form of government. I said people try to still want to belly up for Israel. Get involved in foreign entanglements. Have us tell us what to do, how to wipe our rear ends. Forget about that. We should think for ourselves. Not not be detained by some slug halfway around the world. Pay homage to these individuals and spread the word about the USS Liberty until June 8th, thank you, to June 8th and, and beyond. And that is it. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share us on our social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or if you're seeing something that's interesting you may want to check out, whatever you do, please send in your correspondence to Decorum. You can get me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Plus, Breaker, R, Radio, Tumblr, YouTube, Freedoms Network, Minds.com, FutureNet.club, Patreon.com, forward slash look to look three with three eyes. If you can be a donor, that'd be awesome. You can be a gab or yours.org. In addition, you can email me at looky number three at gmail.com or you can encrypt it once, especially with Proton Mail accounts, looky luck numbers zero three at protonmail.com. All right, my friends, once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the maniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves, keep on spreading love, and may your guardian spirits be with you.